Good day, learners. My name is Beauty Panza. Our subject today is accounting. I'm going to take you through the management of tangible assets. We know that this is one section that you have already done in grade 10 and also in grade 11. Remember that learners in grade 10, you looked at the acquisition of assets, which means the buying of fixed assets. And then also in your grade 11, you looked now at the sales of assets, the disposal of assets. I'm now going to take you through the outcomes of this lesson. Our main objective, our first objective, you must be able at the end of the lesson to define the tangible assets. You must understand the different methods of depreciation. You also need to be able to apply the GAP principles that are related to the fixed assets or the tangible assets. We are going to use those two terms interchangeably. And also, we are also going to look at the internal control processes of the tangible assets. Because the main topic for today is the management of tangible assets. We are also going to look again at the ethics that are related to the tangible assets. And we will look also at the calculations for assets that are fully depreciated. And this section, I know that it gives you a lot of problems. Therefore, when we arrive at this section, I'm expecting you to listen attentively. I hope now you have your pen and your paper as well as your, as, as well as your calculator because at some stage, we are going to do the calculations. <coughs> Let us look at the definition of tangible assets. Remember we said tangible assets have been done already in your previous grades. Tangible assets are categorized as non-current assets because they have a longer lifespan and they can be used by a business over a longer period of time. These assets are used to produce goods and services and so that the business can generate the profit. The examples of assets are buildings, are vehicles, they are equipment. And these assets are not acquired by the business for the purpose of resale or even trading. The business acquires them in order to produce goods and services as we have already indicated. I want us to look now at the recording of tangible assets. When you record the tangible assets, it is very key to note, for you to note that the assets will always be recorded at cost, at the cost price. And that normally happens in the note for tangible assets. Remember that in our balance sheet, in our financial, uh, in our financial statements, especially in the balance sheet, we don't record the cost price. We only record the carrying value, which means after we have subtracted the accumulated depreciation. And always in your note number three, as much as the cost price is reflected for all your groups of assets, also the accumulated depreciation is going to be reflected. Because you need to see at the end of the day that what is the book value of the assets that are in the possession of the business. And remember that your equipment and your vehicles, they normally depreciate in value. Their value goes down, it diminishes because they are subjected to wear and tear because of daily use. And your land and buildings will always appreciate in terms of the value. And that is why you will see when I indicate to you note number three, that your land and buildings do not depreciate in terms of their value. But it is important that if you have buildings, the structures in your business, 
as much as they are not diminishing. It is key that you maintain your assets, you look after your assets. If you have to do any renovations to your buildings, you need to do that. If you have to do any painting to the buildings, you need to do that so that you keep their value up there. Here's our note on tangible assets. I've already indicated to you that your equipment, as well as your vehicles, they will always depreciate. Look at the depreciation here. For your vehicles, the depreciation is 50,000, and the cost price was 120. Remember that we said that the cost price, according to GAP principle, must always be reflected of all the assets, irrespective of their appreciation or depreciation in value. Look, now here we have our uh, book value, which is a reduced balance because of the accumulated depreciation. And then when you check your equipment also, they are at 95, they reduced by 12 thou because of use, wear and tear, and then now it is at 83,000. But to check your buildings, if they were bought at 500,000 and we are going to keep our buildings at that cost of 500,000. You see, there's no depreciation here. Each time you prepare the records, your land and buildings are going to be kept at 500,000 at the cost price. And we have already made a reference to GAP principle. We have said that as much as the assets are appreciating, especially the land and buildings, as much as they appreciate, but they will be kept at the cost price. So it's very important that we follow that, we comply as a business. Because if you decide as a business to inflate your, your land and buildings, because maybe the property might have appreciated at the property market, that is going to create problems for you. Let us say uh, our um, cost price for, for, for land and buildings, as we have indicated in the previous slide, it is 500,000. If it happens that the cost price of the building appreciates, or the value, let me say the value of the building appreciates maybe to about 800,000. There will be a difference of 300,000. We are not as a business going to record that in our business. Even if we can have a property valuator who's going to check the asset for us, value the asset for us, but still we cannot record the extra 300,000 in our records. We are going to keep that at 500,000 because now if we are recording we are recognizing the profit that we haven't received as a business. We can only record the 300,000 rents at the point of sale. That is why we don't want to record it because it has the tax implication. As a business, if you record that profit, it means now that your, your profit are going to be inflated and meaning that now your taxation will be more also. Therefore, we cannot do that at this stage. I hope that is well understood. Now I'm going to take you to the lifespan of tangible assets. This is very key. The lifespan of tangible assets is determined by the following. Remember we said that tangible assets have a longer lifespan. You can use them over a longer period when they are well maintained. Let us look at, at the first factor. Number one, the age of the asset at the point of acquisition. If you buy your asset uh, new at the point of acquisition, it means that asset is going to last you longer than a person who has bought a second hand you know, asset. So it is, it is much safer when you buy your assets new. You can always predict also their lifespan. You can work out their lifespan. And then the frequency of use is very key. If the assets are regularly used, definitely they are going to wear out. They will definitely wear out. 
And it is very important that you control the use of assets in the business. It's very important. We're going to look at the control, the management of assets at a later stage. And you will find that in a business, in most businesses, you know, employees are overusing the assets for their personal gain. So that is why it is important that as a business, you put the system in place in order to, to safeguard the assets of the business. And then uh, we are going to look now at the conditions of the business environment. If the conditions are not niche, they are not clean, and especially if the structures are not clean, definitely the value of your assets is going to be affected negatively. They are going to drop even before the time that was expected. And then the repair policy, as well as the maintenance policy, this is very key. It's very key. When you have your assets, if they get damaged, you need to repair them. You need also to maintain the assets, especially with your vehicles. They need to be serviced regularly. A business must keep a maintenance, a maintenance policy, where now, which is going to, to, to dictate, to reflect that uh, the, the, the business uh, vehicles probably, they are maintained on these kind of regular intervals because mostly with your vehicles, you'll find that they need to be serviced yearly or at an interval of 20 kilometers or 15,000 kilo, 15, kilometers, 20,000 kilometers, or even 10,000. It will depend with the capacity of the engine. But uh, the, the, the motor dealers normally, they will give you uh, they, when they sell an asset to you, they will give you a maintenance plan, which you are going to have to comply with as the owner of the business. And also you will find that we have other categories of assets, such as your computers, your equipment, and those also need to be serviced. They need to be maintained regularly also. And it is advisable also if a business is big, that they employ, they keep on their payroll, a person who is going to be responsible, you know, for maintaining the laptops, you know, the photocopying machines, etc. And but if a business is not that large, definitely it, it will be very expensive for anybody to keep a full time technician in a business. Therefore, they will have to outsource and also pay a fee to that person. I'm going to take you now to the next slide, the asset register. This register is very important. An asset register is important to each and every organization. The purpose of the register, of the asset reg register, is to keep track of the book value of the assets. And if you run a business, you must keep a separate register for each and every asset that you own as a business. If you have five computers, there must be five asset registers for those five computers. And the asset register also is going to enable the business to calculate depreciation accurately. And that information is going to be used by the management. And also it will be used for taxation purposes because depreciation affects our profits. It will definitely reduce our profits. I want us now to look at the format of the asset register. You have already done this at grade 11. You have already been introduced to asset register. This is the format. I'm just going to give you two minutes just to look at the format. And then we'll go to the next slide. Uh, these are the details that we get from the asset register. We are going to stick to the highlighted area because of time. The date of purchase, it is very important. The cost to price, that's very important. Remember this information. 
you'll be able to calculate correctly your depreciation if you have this information in the asset register. And it is the duty of the internal auditor to see to it that the systems are in place. There are registers for all the assets that are in place. Because definitely the external auditor has got an interest in the asset register. We'll discuss, we'll come back to that point. It is also very important that um, all the assets are barcoded, they have serial numbers, they have registration numbers, and registration we're referring to motor vehicles. And uh, there must be also, you know, invoices that are attached. Whatever invoices that you got when you, you acquire those assets, when you bought those assets, they must be filed for the purpose of verification. The rate of depreciation is very key and the method of depreciation because now we need to always comply, always use the correct method of depreciation. I'm gonna come back now to the registration. It is important because now the auditor, the external auditor, when he comes into the business, he will need to verify the ownership. He will really want to know if you are the owner of the assets that are recorded in the business books. Because some of the people, they will want to inflate their assets, you know, and even record the assets that are not physically in the premises of the business. And they rely mostly, you know, on the external sources. They rely on external sources more than, you know, the information that is generated within the business. So the documents that are from other sources, your banks, your creditors, your suppliers, are more reliable to, to, to auditors. And also with the invoices, they will definitely want to check really if you did purchase those assets. There was any purchase that was made. If there are any bank statements, they will also need to check if there were maybe, you know, some payments that were done. And when the auditor, when the external auditor comes, he is also going to do the calculations again. He will re-perform the calculations. That is why the rate of depreciation, because he'll be testing if you have applied the correct depreciation, and then if you have also applied the correct method, because you cannot chop and change, you know, the method of depreciation. It also, it also, it is also has tax implication, and it is also unethical. Remember, we keep on integrating our ethics into each and every activity that we're doing. We are now going to look at the management of tangible assets. And this slide is very key. It speaks to our topic for today. Uh, it is very important that all the purchases of tangible assets are authorized by the management. The management must be authorized because the danger will be that if there's no authority that comes from the management, any employee can buy the assets using the name of the business only to find that the business is going to pay for these assets and the assets are going to be delivered somewhere in the premises of the employee. And this is, this is also an unethical conduct. And Let's look at the next point. An internal auditor, remember we said he is responsible for putting up the systems in place. He must see to it that there are proper records and that there's relevant documentation that relates to the tangible assets. And all the assets in the business we've mentioned that Ella should have, you know, a separate asset register. And the receipts, we have also spoken to the receipts that are going to be verified by the uh, external auditor. And also the other parties that are interested in the invoices are the uh, people who are selling the insurance, the products. They will be interested also in the invoices because really they want to know if they are really ensuring uh, 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 something that is there in the business that is proof of payment. We are now going, oh, we still have more tangible assets that we have to look at. They, we said earlier they must be barcoded, they must be labeled, they should have serial numbers, and yeah, this is going to help anybody who verifies 
to identify those assets. And there must be regular stock taking of assets, meaning that now the physical, the actual assets should be compared against the asset registers. And they need to be signed in and out so that you track the movement of assets. If an employee has taken an asset, like maybe a computer, especially a laptop, you know, to use, that must be signed. It must be signed for, because it is very easy, you know, to, to, to leave the premises of the business with a laptop. Only if the systems in the building are not in place, there are no security checks at the entrance and all that, then it will be easy for, 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 for the employees to walk out to the assets. And also, it is very important that they sign so that if something is damaged, somebody must take accountability for that. And then let us look now at uh, the vehicles. They must be recorded in the logbook. They have to be recorded. If somebody is going to take a vehicle, an employee, he must record the kilometers at the point of departure. And then when he comes back also, he has to record the correct kilometers. But that can only happen only if somebody in the senior position is going to monitor that process. Because many employees can take advantage of that. They can decide to take uh, the assets of the business, run their own errands, and knowing very well that nobody is checking what you are recording. So it's very key that you, 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 you check these processes. And all the assets must be insured against fire, theft, and also the natural causes also, or natural disasters. Because remember, if a, an asset has been stolen, B business is going to stop, production is going to stop. Therefore, if they are in short, you'll be able to continue as a business and generate more profits. I want us now to look at the depreciation methods. There are two methods of depreciation. You have the cost price, which is the simple one, the standard one, and your diminishing balance method. <clears throat> the cost price, <clears throat> the cost price method, when you calculate it, when you use it to calculate the depreciation, when you use the cost price method to calculate the depreciation, this is going to be your standard formula. It is going to be your cost price multiplied by the rate, which is the percentage that is normally given, and then multiplied by the period. Normally we are referring to months and even to, 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 to a year, a period of one year. And then that is going to give you your depreciation. And then the diminishing balance method, you will always say your cost price minus the accumulated depreciation, and then multiplied by the rate and the period, and then that is going to give you the depreciation. And then alternatively, you can still say, you can use this method, ART, A-R-T, where you'll be saying amount, it can be an amount, or a net amount, where you are using the diminishing balance method, and then you're going to multiply by rate, and the time that will give you the depreciation. Now we are also going to look at this, area which is very important. I know that a lot of uh, learners are getting challenged in this area. Uh, remember that uh, in a business you are going to have different classes of assets. You will have the assets that are sold, that are being disposed of. You are going to have the assets that are old, which are going to remain in the business when you sell other assets. You will also have new assets in the business. So these are the three categories that you are going to come across to in any of your calculations. And in, in short, these are called SON, S-O-N. Okay, I want us to look now, because this is the most tricky part. You know, calculating your depreciation when you're using the asset that has been disposed of or the new asset, it's very easy. But this is the most complicated part, the asset that is going to remain in the business. Okay, let us see how you can calculate it when you are using the cost price method. When you use that method, you are going to say 
the total cost of all your assets. Remember, we'll be speaking about a certain category of assets. It might be vehicles. That will be excluding other types of assets. Therefore, you are going to say the total cost of your vehicles minus the vehicle that you are selling and then minus the vehicle that you have just bought or acquired. And this information, again, you can only minus this if the information, if the adjustments are saying to you that the asset has already been recorded. But if the asset has not yet been recorded, there is no point of subtracting. Let's look now when you use the diminishing balance method. You are also going to follow this step, the first step. And then you are going to now deduct. You are going to take out the accumulated depreciation. You will take your whole accumulated depreciation and then you will subtract only the depreciation of the asset that is old. Remember, if an asset is new, we will only uh, calculate the depreciation of that asset at the end of the accounting period. I hope this section is fully understood because this is the key to do the correct, you know, the accurate transactions or even the calculations. We are now going to look at our activity. And our activity for today has been extracted from the NSC paper for 2018. And um, we are going to start uh, with 5.2 and 5.3. The, the reason is that we want to spend more time on the calculations. So we'll pack 5.1 and do it later. And if you check your 5.2, Already it has been addressed in our previous slides. I want us to look at the question. This is extracted from the books of Mind You Limited and their financial year ends on 31st May 2018, which tells us that the year began on the 1st of June in 2017. Right. Uh, let us look now at our 5.2. We are required to do this for two marks. And the following question, also two for two marks. I mean that for two marks. Explain how the internal auditor will ensure that fixed assets are not stolen. Remember, we've already discussed that it is very important that an asset register for each and every asset is kept in the business. We will project that slide later where you will see um, the suggested solutions for this. And then also we did mention that it is important that physical stock counting of assets take place on regular intervals and randomly so also. And we also indicated that assets must be signed for. If anybody takes an asset to use, he must record in the register. So those are some of the points that will assist the internal auditor in safeguarding the assets of the business. Let's look now at 5.3. The land and buildings were bought five years ago for six million. Property prices have increased by 20% at the property market. They have increased by 20% and the directors wanted to increase the value of the asset and reflect a profit of 1.2, they reflect a, a profit of 1.2 million in the financial assets. So basically this question is saying that this land and buildings was bought for 6 million and that is the amount that is recorded in our books, in our financial records, 6 million. That has increased by 20% by 1.2, it means now the current value of this asset is 7.2 million. So now, as an independent auditor, you are advised, you need to give advice to the owner of the business as to what to be done. The owner of the business here, he should not effect any appreciation of value 
or any improvement of value that is 1.2, you must not record that in the business. The cost of 6 million should be kept at cost. Because now if that 1.6 million, I mean 1.2 million is going to be recorded, that is going to inflate you know, the profits of the business. Remember, earlier we mentioned that you cannot record any appreciation in the value of the land and buildings. We can only do this at the point of sale when we decide to, to, to sell the land and buildings. Then we can recognize profit then at that stage. Then we're going to keep it at 6 million, not 7.2 million. I'm going to take you now to the, soli the solutions that I've given you earlier. Remember that we said um, remember that in our first question, the 5.2, we had to respond to this question, and these are the points that we have already spoken to for your 5.2. This is just a summary of what you spoke to. And normally, you know, with the previous one, two marks will be allocated to this point. When you look at past papers, it will be given two marks. But examiners can decide to change, you know, the way they allocate marks. They can decide to give it one point. So it will depend with the demands of the question paper as well as what the examiner wants to do or one wants to achieve from the, the question that is being assessed. And then when you look at this one, we've already spoken to each that you will have to keep your asset at cost because of the GAP principle that we have to uh, comply with. And the two marks is normally you know, allocated to this. If you give a full statement, you'll definitely get your full marks. I will take you back now to the activity. You are now going to address 5.1, where we shall be engaging or doing the calculations. Okay, let us look at the activity that we are going to do. Yeah, remember that 5.1 said we need to calculate the missing figures that are indicated by 1 up to 4 in the table below. And that's allocated 17 marks. Okay, let us look at the next slide where we have our, the projection of our calculations. Okay. The information that is presented to you, you can see that you have the buildings, you have the computers, and then you also have the equipment as well as your vehicles. But in most of the activities, you'll find that uh, the computers are classified as equipment. But the examiner is trying to communicate with you to say you can get the in information you know, presented in any format. You must just pre be prepared for any, any format. That is not, you know, the normal type of a format that you are used to. Let us look now. This is what we are expected to give. The amount for the additions of your buildings. Number two, we are expected to calculate the depreciation. We are supposed to calculate the depreciation of the computers. And then when you look at the third column, we are expected to calculate also the depreciation of equipment. And for your fourth one, you are supposed to calculate the book value. I'm saying the book value because this amount here for assets that are disposed of is normally reflected as a, at a book value when you draw your note for tangible assets. And then number five, we will be looking at the accumulated depreciation again of the vehicles. So I'm gonna address this one because it's easy. Look at the equipment, vehicles, and then we'll see the computers later because we need to unpack it to explain it very slowly to you so that you capture it, you understand it very clearly. Okay, I want us now to look at the land and buildings. For your land and buildings, we are told that grant construction 
was paid 882,000 for building new offices and repairing the windows. The offices were built for 610 and the windows were repaired for 272,000. So therefore when you go to your notary free of tangible assets, you are not going to record the 272,000. The only amount that you are going to record, it is your 610,000. Because that is only speaking to the building of the offices. But in this case, we are not building anything. We are just repairing what has been damaged. Therefore, this will affect our expenses. This will go to the income statement. And this is going to reduce our, our profits. So it has a negative impact on our profits. Um, I want us now to look at the equipment. The equipment in this case, we have an additional equipment which was purchased on the 1st of February 2018. And the depreciation for equipment is 10% per annum on cost. I want us to go back now to our calculations. Remember that we bought equipment and in the books of the business, we do have other classes also or other types of equipment. Therefore, it's always very important that when you calculate the depreciation, you actually separate your calculations. The old assets and the new assets, you need to calculate them separately in order for you to get the accurate figures. Okay, we'll go back to our previous slide. Remember that the equipment that is new was bought on the 1st of February. Remember that earlier we said that our year begins 01 June, on the 1st of June, 2017, and then it is going to end 31st May, 2018. And if you check, this equipment was bought somewhere during the accounting period on the 1st of Feb. We are now going to start calculating. Remember that we bought. We are going to move from this point up to the end of the year. If we buy, we move from here up to the end of the year. We're going to calculate from February. It's February, March, April, May, and that gives us four months. We're going to write down the four months. It means now our depreciation that is going to, to be calculated will only be for four months because we have only used the asset for four months. We are now going to look at the cost price of the asset that was bought, but we need the previous slide for that information. Okay, let us look at the equipment. If you check, there was a movement in your assets. The new asset that was bought, it was bought for 172,500. Okay, that is the value of the asset. This asset has never been depreciated before. Therefore, we are going to say times 10%, which is the same as 10 over 100, and then multiplied by 4 over 12. Let's punch the figures in our calculators. That is going to give us 5750. That is going to be our depreciation for the new 
as such. Equipment. We are now going to look at the old assets. Remember, our information says that we need to calculate the depreciation at cost. The value of our old assets is 12 of 50,000, 1.25 or it's 1,250,000. Okay, we're going to multiply this by 10% again. It's a full year. You can say multiplied by one, and that is not going to have any impact. And then you will get your figures. But it's easy because we're only given 10%. You can just eliminate one zero from this figure instead of wasting time. And your answer is going to be 125,000. But if you have more time, you can just test it, test the calculations. And then now we're going to combine this depreciation, A and B. We are going to add those two figures. And the total depreciation is going to be our one, three, Zero, seven, five, zero. So this is our total depreciation. And it is going to be recorded here under this column. We are now going to move to our vehicles and calculate the depreciation on them. Okay, let us check the vehicles also. Let us check the information that is given to us. If you check there, there's a cost price of 2.1 million. And also we've got um, the depreciation of 800,000. And already in this case, depreciation has been calculated and it is 256,000. So what we need to do here, we need to calculate the book value of the asset that we are going to sell as a business because it is disposals. Okay, that information is not given. Okay, let us look now at the information that is provided to us in the activity. For your D, depreciation is sitting at 20% per annum. It is at 20% per annum on a carrying value, diminishing value, and a vehicle was sold for cash at a carrying value on 31 December 2017. And the fixed asset register for this vehicle reflected the following. Remember previously we said that an asset register for each type of an asset must be kept. So we have obtained, we have extracted this information from this register, okay. Remember that the accounting period begins on the 1st of June. Okay, it ends 30 May. And in this case, we sold an asset. An asset was sold. But when? On the 31st of December. We sold on the 31st of December, 2017. This is 2017, and then this is 2018. All right, because now we're disposing the assets, we're going to look at a different direction. Remember with the previous one, we started from the point of purchase up to the end of the year. But in this case, we are going to look from the beginning of the year up to the point of sale. We are selling in this case. Then we're working backwards with our calculations. We're going back to the beginning of the accounting period. Therefore, we're going to calculate the number of months and you're going to assist me. It's June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And it's actually very important that you always use your fingers so that now you can be accurate. Because if anything goes wrong with the calculation of months, your calculations are going to be incorrect. Therefore, we have our seven months. Okay, 
meaning that now we have only used this asset for seven months this year. Remember, remember Lena's stage. Depreciation only takes place at the end of the year. We calculate it at the end of the year only. But if an asset is sold during the year, we will definitely have to calculate the depreciation of that asset because when we sell an asset, we need to de-recognize it from our books. We need to remove it from the books. So if you remove the asset, you will also remove the depreciation of the asset that you are selling. That's, therefore, that's why it is important to, to calculate the depreciation of the asset. Let us check now the cost price. You are already given this information. What we need to do is to look at the cost price, which is 176,000. And the accumulated depreciation is 128,000. You minus this because you need to get the net value. And the net value is going to be how much? Let's use our calculators. 176 minus 128. That's going to give me 48. This is an easy way of calculating, but I want you to use this method only if you feel comfortable with it. This is going to help you to do your calculations very quick and fast. But you need to count the number of zeros. Remember what I did when I was doing the calculations? I said 176 because I know the number of figures or the number of digits that are there in those two figures are the same. So I took the 176 and 128. So it makes life easy. Instead of punching, you know, 12 digits, you only punch six digits. And that saves you a lot of time to focus at other calculations. And then from there, you will come back to add the three zeros. So that is going to give us our book value. This is the book value. And this is the value that we are going to use to calculate our depreciation. We are now going to say 48,000. Multiply, we need to get back now to the percentage. We are going to multiply this by 20%. And also, we need to take into account that for the current period, the asset was only used for seven months. You are now going to say seven over 12, and then times 20%. Okay, let us do the calculations. 48,000 times 20%. And then multiply it by seven and you divide it by 12. That is going to give you 5,600 rands. So this 5,600 rands is the depreciation, the current depreciation of the asset that we have just sold as a business. Remember that in the previous slide, we are supposed to calculate, uh, we are supposed to calculate the book value of that asset. Remember, 5,006 is our depreciation. All right. And when we get back to the information, our cost, we said it, it was 176, and then we subtracted 128, and then that gave us 48. Remember, we still have our zeros there. We have those zeros there. there. Then we are now going to say 5,006. This is our current depreciation. Okay, we are going to say now from 48,000, which was the book value. 48,000, we are going to subtract from each a further 5,006. This is the current depreciation. And then that is going to give us 42,000. 400. So this 42,400 rands is the book value on the asset that we have just sold as a business. Remember that in your note number three, you won't be able to record any profit 
that has been generated or whatever through the sales of assets because we are looking at a note number three for today. We are done with uh, the vehicles. Remember that other, the depreciation on all the vehicles was already calculated. The only thing that we had to calculate was the book value, but we had to calculate the depreciation before we do that. I want us now to look at this part, number five of our vehicles. We are supposed to calculate here the depreciation. And the figure that we are going to calculate here, it is a figure that excludes the asset that has been sold already. That asset will have to be eliminated for us to get the correct amount here. All right, I want us now to look at the accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year. If you check, we had 2.1 million of uh, the cost price. Um, and then we're also given the 800,000, which is your accumulated depreciation. But we are not going to focus at this. We don't need this. Because the only thing that we need to calculate, it is our accumulated depreciation number five. Therefore, we are only going to take 800,000. We are also going to take 256. And we are also going to look at the calculations that we have done as a business also. Okay, let's look at the calculations. We have our 800,000. Oh, that's our 800,000 at the beginning. Remember our focus is only accumulated depreciation plus depreciation. Okay, we are going to add the 256,000. This is our current depreciation. The 800 is the one that we had at the beginning of the year. And remember that the 800,000 include the depreciation for both assets and also the 256,000 include the depreciation for assets, the current depreciation for both assets. Here, the accumulated depreciation for both assets. I want us to go back to the previous slide because we have our calculations there. Remember that uh, we had as our depreciation 128,000 at the beginning of the year, as well as the 5,600 5, francs. Let us migrate to this information. It's 128,000 plus 5,600. When you look at this 128,000, which is reflected in our information, this 128,000, it is the depreciation at the beginning of the year, and it is included in this value. The 5,600 rands also is the current depreciation, and already it is included in this depreciation that has been provided to us. That one has been given to us. Now let's do our calculations. We're going to say 800,000 plus 256,000. And then we're going to take out one, two. Minus 128,000 minus 5,600. That must be able to give us the depreciation for at the end of the year. And then our total depreciation is going to be 92,000 to, it's 922,400 rands. These digits are too many. It's 922,400 rands. You can still use a T account. In your T account for accumulated depreciation, On vehicles, you are going to have the balance. That is why you are going to write your 800,000 on the credit side. 
And then the depreciation for the current year, which is equivalent to 256,000, it is going to be written here on the credit side of this account, 256,000. And then remember that now, this depreciation is allocated to the asset that we are disposing of, we are getting rid of as a business. Therefore, this information must be debited. We are going to say on the debit side of this account, asset disposal, and then you are going to take out, we'll write this in brackets so that you earn more marks in an exam. 128,000 plus 5,600. And the balance that you are going to get must give you exactly this information. But I will reflect this information to you later in our slides. It's neatly written. We are now going to look at the last part of our calculations, that is uh, the computers. I want you to read that transaction. Okay, three computers uh, were bought by the business on the same day at 36,000 each. And the depreciation is 33 and one over three percent on cost. And these computers are expected to last a business for another full two years. Remember, each was bought at 36,000. I want us to go back now to our information, to our presentation. Okay, let's look at that column. Here are the computers. If you look the cost, it's 108,000 because now 36,000 has been multiplied by three in order to get 108,000. And then there is the accumulated depreciation currently now on this uh, uh, computers. And then we are now going to calculate the depreciation as we are expected. But I want you to take a closer look at the carrying value. The carrying value of the computers is 13,000. This is the carrying value. All right. We are now going to take these three computers and it's 108,000. Remember, each is worth 36,000. And then we're going to multiply by 33 and one over three. And remember that you are not selling any of these computers. They were not also bought during the year. Then we're going to calculate the depreciation for the full year, multiplied by one. All right, multiplied by one year. I want us now to look at the one, we need to break it down, the, 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 the 33 and one over three. This is the rate of our depreciation that we need to use, but it's very important that we simplify this rate. It's easy to simplify it. You are going to say 33 and one over three. Remember that always if uh, you express any figure as a percentage, it must be divided by 100. All right, we are now going to divide by the 100 so that we uh, get the right uh, percentage. Let us look now. We are going to say three. This doesn't look proper. Uh, oh. Okay, we are going to say 33. Three multiplied by 33, that gives us 99, plus one, which is going to be 100 over it's your three times 33, 99, that gives you 99, plus one, it will give you 100 over three. Remember that we said we still need to divide by a 100 because we are dealing with percentages here. So to simplify this further, you will pardon me, we don't have enough space here and I don't want to move to the next slide. We are going to say now 100 over three, 
okay, divided by 100. This 100 is the same as 100 over 1. It is the same as 100 over 1. Now we are going to have to change our sign because we want to simplify this. We want to make this calculation easy. Remember this division sign here. We need to change it now to a multiplication sign. We are now going to put in a multiplication sign. And then this rest of the information that is given here is also going to change. Your numerator, which is 100, is now going to be your denominator, 100. And then that one will be your numerator. Therefore, this is what you are now going to have. You are going to have 100 multiplied by 1, which gives you 100 over 300. It's 100 over 300. You can simplify this further and say 1 over 3. Because 33 and 1 over 3, it is actually a third. So in your calculations, you can just use 1 over 3 if you want. And if you punch your, calcu your calculator, it is going to give you a figure that looks like this. If you say 1 over 3, you are going to say you are going to have 0 0.333333 to infinity. And it is very important that when you do your calculations, you don't you know, remove some of the threes there so that you get the right uh, figure. Because there'll be round, rounding off errors if you remove the other three, uh, the other threes that we have. I hope we are all clear now. We are now going to go back to our calculations. Remember we said uh, our assets, our computer, our computers are worth 108,000. So it's going to be 108,000 multiplied by, I'm going to take 1 over 3. You can still use this one, times 1 here, and then that is going to give us, you can just simply say 108 divided by 3, just for simple calculations. 108,000 divided by 3, and that is going to give us the 36,000. This is not the answer yet. That 36,000 is not correct. We have used the standard, you know, formula to calculate it, but it is not correct. The reason is that I need you to go back to your computers. I want you to take a closer look at the carrying value of the computers. If you look at the carrying value, the carrying value is 13,000. So this exercise, it begins to tell you that your calculations are not appropriate. You can never record any depreciation that is going to uh, uh, exceed the book value. Remember our book value at this stage is 13,000. Therefore, 36,000 cannot be recorded in our books. But I want to teach you how to save time when you are doing this calculation. Because this calculation is basically very, very straightforward. What you are going to do, you are just now going to say 13,000. All right, we are now going to subtract. And the value that we are going to subtract, it's only a rand. But in this case, we are only going to say one rand times three. Remember, we've got three assets. This is going to give you your depreciation. When you say 13,000 minus three, it will give you one, two, nine, nine, seven. This is going to be your depreciation. You are only allowed to record 12,997. And the reason why we took out three rents, we have three assets. And remember that even if an asset can be fully depreciated, we still need to keep it in our records, but the book value will have to be kept at a rent for each asset. But in this case, because we have three assets, we are going to keep those three assets at three rents until such time that we as a business, we decide to get rid of the assets. So for now, this is what you are going to have. Meaning that in the current year, in your income statement, you are going to record this figure. But in the following year, 
even if you may have those assets, you are not going, going to record any depreciation for these assets. There's going to be no depreciation recorded. You will just record the cost, accumulated depreciation, and the net value of one rand times three. And a lot of learners, you know, in an exam, you will find that they make mistakes around this question. They will, if there are three assets that are fully depreciated, they will just give, you know, they will take out one rand. You need to multiply. If it's two assets, you will say one rand times two, and then meaning that you're going to take out two rands from uh, the value of your assets. And then now uh, with the value of your depreciation, we are now going to look, I think we're done with the calculations. The calculations are done. I'm now going to take you to the solutions that are neatly written. I want you to go through these solutions step by step. This is everything that we have discussed earlier. Your equipment, we did these calculations also. And then your vehicles, they are done step by step. And then I want us to go to this slide here. This is the slide that I was explaining to you. So these are the calculations that I said to you, they are not correct, they are not proper. So always when you deal with this question, it's very important that you don't waste time. Look at the cost price of your assets as well as the accumulated depreciation. If the cost price of the asset is very close to the accumulated depreciation, that is actually giving you a signal to say, this asset is about to be fully depreciated. And you will always notice that uh, your book value will carry a very, very, you know, minimal amount. So this is the information that we have just discussed now. You can just have a look at it. And we said earlier that we will keep these assets in our business. As long as we are still using them, we feel that they are still productive, they will be continued to be recorded in the business until time we, dis we decide to dispose them off. I think uh, we have calculated all the um, calculations that were needed. We have worked out everything. And here yeah, we are almost at the end of the lesson. But I want us now to look at the information, the resources that will be very important to you. Um, I needed to check uh, your exam guide for grade 12 for 2020. And that is where you're going to see a breakdown of this topic that we have covered. It is on page five, nine, and 10. And remember also this section is assessed in paper one and in paper two. And in your paper two, definitely, you will find the management of assets, but calculations, you can still be expected to do the calculations in your paper one on tangible assets, as well as paper two. And then also go again to your mind, your mind the gap study guide. I know that a lot of you are at home, but you can access this. If you don't have a hard copy of the Mind, mind the Gap study guide, you can always Google. Go to www.education.gov.za. You can get that resource. And you go to page 127 of chapter 8. This information is going to assist you in this topic. And then also I needed to refer to the past papers, uh, your NSC papers your provincial exam papers, as well as uh, the amended certificate exam papers, and many, many, many other resources that are in circulation that you can think of. And I know it's not very easy for you, you're working from home, and I think this activity that we have done, the calculations that we have done, is going to benefit you. What I need you to do, I need you to go back and redo this activity today so that now we can be able to capture all the information that has been presented to you. Thank you very much.